In the previous video in this series, we explored the concepts of mass and weight and how they're related. Discuss the fact that weight is a force, specifically weight is acceleration due to gravity acting on a mass. Now to step from here towards understanding the why things float, I want to propose we think about weight in a different way. Consider this video. When the ball rolls off the front of my hand, it falls. It's fairly straightforward to understand that it is the force of gravity causing the ball to fall. But I want to rewind for a minute and consider what happens before the ball leaves my hand. In this situation, it's not falling. There's no motion. So if the ball is not falling, where is gravity? The answer is gravity is constant. Gravity is always acting on the ball. So in order for the ball not to be falling in this condition, there must be some other force acting on it. And that is exactly what's happening. In this situation where the ball is not falling, it's lying stationary in my hand, it's because my hand is applying an upward force on the ball, preventing it from falling. So if we think about weight in this context, we can define weight as being equal to a force required to prevent an object from moving due to gravity. And in this cartoon representation where the black bar is my hand, gravity is pulling down on the ball. The ball is not moving because my hand is applying a upward force, and this is referred to as a normal force. When the ball does roll off, it falls and for a short period of time, nothing is opposing gravity, and then it hits the floor and stops falling. And in this case, an upward force is being applied to the ball from the floor. So now let's ask another question. What if we drop the ball into water? Well, before it falls into the water, we're in the same case as before. The ball is sitting in someone's hand. It's not moving and the lack of motion is due to an upward force applied by the hand. When the ball rolls off, one of two things happen. Either the ball hits the water and keeps going, in which case it sinks, or it doesn't sink. The question becomes, why does the ball sink in some cases? Why do some balls sink and some not? The answer must be that if it's not sinking, some other force is acting on it. And in this case, it is the buoyancy force. And the buoyancy force is the upward force exerted on an object when it is placed in liquid. Liquids exert a buoyancy force on all objects, heavy and light. There's always a buoyancy force when an object is placed in water. In order for an object to float, the buoyancy force must be greater than the pull of gravity. So let's consider two objects a rubber ball that has a mass of 115 grams and calculate its weight, which in this case is 1.13 newtons. And a lead weight, a four pound lead weight in metric system, it's got a mass of 1.81 kilograms. Do the same calculation. Calculate it, it has a weight of 17.7 newtons. So it's much heavier. It has more mass and more weight than the rubber ball. So what happens when these get put in water? As soon as they touch the water, as soon as a little bit of them are immersed in the water, a buoyancy force is created in the opposite direction. The deeper they go into the water, the greater the buoyancy force. If we pause here and ask what's going on, we can see if these lines are to scale. At this point, for the rubber ball, the buoyancy force equals the weight of the ball. And when these forces balance, the ball stops falling. We now have a force opposing gravity. In the case of the lead weight, buoyancy force is still greater, is still much less than the weight of the weight of the lead weight, and it continues to sink. So with the lead weight fully immersed, buoyancy force is still less than the pull of gravity, and the lead weight continues to fall. So now we can answer our two questions, at least qualitatively. There's still some math we can do, but from a conceptual perspective, we start with the idea that all objects on Earth feel the pull of gravity. If an object is not accelerating towards the center of the Earth, it means some other force is acting on it. Also, when an all objects placed in a liquid experience a buoyancy force from the liquid pushing up on the object. 
To answer the first question, why do some things float? If the buoyancy force acting on an object submerged in water is greater than the object's weight, the object floats. This is the case of the rubber ball where buoyancy force, the buoyancy force is greater than the weight and the ball floats. If the buoyancy force acting on an object submerged in water is less than the object's weight, the object sinks, as with the lead. So this is our first question, but packed into this understanding of the balancing between the, 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 the contrast between weight and buoyancy force is also the answer to the second question, which is why objects submerged in water appear to weigh less. Remember, buoyancy force acts on all objects submerged in water, even objects that sink. So as a result, the apparent weight of an object in water is equal to the object's weight minus the buoyancy force acting on it. So even though the object fully submerged and, would, and continues to sink, there is buoyancy force. And so the weight of the object, the red arrow, minus the buoyancy force, the blue arrow, will equal the submerged weight. So it will weigh a little bit less, and the amount less it will weigh is equal to the buoyancy force exerted on the object. So qualitatively, we've answered both our questions. We'll do one more video to describe calculating buoyancy force. We did math to calculate the mass and weight of an object, so we'll go ahead and explore how we calculate buoyancy force.